Hi everybody, welcome to another installment of West Virginia Smoking and Reeling and Outdoors. Today, I'm going to show you how to finish a deer skull after you've removed the hide, the meat, and sinew from the skull. You may have pressure washed it, or you may have picked it clean yourself. But I'm going to show you the process in which I do in order to get a European mount ready for display. Stay tuned. First, I'm going to give you a little backstory on these skulls. These skulls were skinned and meat taken off of them, and they sat in a shed afterward for over a year. This caused some severe issues after the boiling. As you can see, it actually looks like it was painted black with permanent marker inside of the nose even after the boiling process. And the palate underneath was just as black as the nose cavity. But I got the skulls picked clean and rinsed and ready. But the skulls were extra greasy with some adhered sinew, so I drew up some hot water and Dawn dishwashing liquid, soaked them for an hour, and hit them again with a toothbrush. After that was done, I got a gallon and a half of water and added two cups of volume 40 peroxide that I heated up to 140 degrees to soak them because they were so discolored. Just to take off some of the black and excess yellowing grease that was embedded deep into the skull just to enhance the whitening process which was to follow. After I took them out I put them on a cooling rack to dry and noticed that most of the excess yellowing and blackness had been dissolved. Now we can move on to the actual whitening process. This process, most importantly, are these gloves because this stuff will burn living crap out of your hands. What we're working with is a volume 40 peroxide. So you pour this into a little container, um, fill it up a good bit more than you guys will because I've got three deer heads to do. But we fill it up and what I normally use is some of these foam brushes all you got to do you kind of dab it on but you don't want to do it like you're painting a house or, or whatever so you just get it on there nice and thick you want to keep it thick all the way around the skull just to make sure it sticks um, they also make a powder it's called quick white and you can get that at Sally's and that kind of makes it into more of a paste whenever you mix it in with the peroxide and it helps it to stick just a little bit better to the skull but it makes it just a little bit too white for my liking. You guys can do basically whatever you want. Now on the nasal cavity I normally just pour it straight in because you can't really get into the nasal cavity with a uh, brush, plus it kind of gets stuck to those small bones in there. So I do that just to make that process a little bit more simple. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up this video so I don't bore you to death. Next, I transfer it over to the heat source, which in this case is an old kerosene heater. I've filled a baking sheet of water and put it over top of a cooling rack. This helps activate the peroxide. Peroxide is heat activated. What you're wanting to see here, these tiny little bubbles start forming. That means that your peroxide is working. I like to let it sit here for around an hour, maybe even two, just to make sure the whitening process is taking place. Now, you also may have to do this process two or even three times. Most of the time, it's only one. However, since these skulls have set around so long, it might take up to three. After you've been going for a little while, I also like to come in here, just dab it in the spots that's not quite as thick and the spots that's yellow, just to make sure it gets whitened real well. You want to make sure it's on there nice and thick. Make sure you avoid touching any part of the antler. That's why it's important to take them up as much as you can. 
you do not want to get any of this whitener on the antlers if you can avoid it. However, I've also got a tip at the end if you do. After my two hours was up, I looked at the bottom and I still see a good bit of discoloration around the teeth and in the back of the skull. So I'm going to do something that I've never done before. Because of the excess discoloration, I'm going to go ahead and wrap all these antlers in aluminum foil and I'm going to flip the heads over and redo the peroxide on the bottom before I get it ready for the rest of the whitening process. So I'm going to let it go another hour over top of this heat. After the hour was up, I flipped the deer heads right side up again, removed them from the heat source, placed my water and peroxide mixture from earlier back on top of the heater, warmed it up to 140 degrees, and placed the deer heads back in one at a time for two hours apiece. After your two hours are up, go ahead and remove it from its water bath, give it a quick rinse, and after the rinse, you put it on the baking sheet on the cooling rack, dry overnight. Going through the whitening process twice kind of took its toll on this a little bit. I shouldn't have gotten lazy. I should have changed my taping and stuff after the fact. Um, this marker that I showed you, you just paint it on like you would any other marker. And then blend it your desired shade. Now down here most deer as you know have a darker face so you'll probably have to apply a few coats down there if yours ends up about as white as mine. I have a more informative video on this process in my channel if you want to look at it. Make sure you don't get any of this on your white skull that you just did. And this provincial color really is the perfect blend for an antler. So, if you mess up, remember, it's always there. And you can get them for five to ten bucks at any local convenience store. You can hit it with a little mop and glow to seal it on. And all you got to do is basically just paint it on every aspect of the skull, similar to the way you did on the peroxide. And all you got to do is let them dry and sit back and enjoy your work. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Like, comment if you have anything to say. Share this on any social media outlet you desire. And thank you for watching West Virginia Smoking, Grilling, and Outdoors. Until the next one, we'll see you later.